you're part of that generation that's starting to struggle with tech type things, you know. So it is getting harder. These uh, these kids these days on their iPads. You sure, you don't need to go get like the neighbor boy to help you out. <laughs> kind of not. <laughs> we tried downloading more RAM. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Tuxedo can. Well, we return to the adventuring party on this Friday. Um, having vanquished a handful of well-equipped, well-dressed bandits. They were ushering people um, across the road. Or, I'm sorry, across the, the river uh, by force. Uh, the party intervened and struck them all down. Did a little bit of questioning, and then um, I believe y'all rolled the guy into the river. No, we. I. I did suggestion to make him walk westward. Oh, that's right. So he he went westward, um, disappearing into the forest with no plate armor or really any protection other than his undergarments. It's some protection. Um, It'll be fine. Jocelyn getting her first combat experience being uh, attacked by the wolves at the beginning of last session, as well as facing two angry trolls as you encroached upon their territory. The party yeah. gathers itself after a long... Go ahead. She level up? No. But soon. Okay. Maybe. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> what class is she? She is a level one fighter. So, ready to be molded. Nice. Um, but the party, um, having rested the night, um, awakes to a new day. Um, the river stands before you, the mountains, the foothills, um, in your map. I'm um, telling you that you're nearby um, where the treasure has been marked. And let me see if I can remember the name of the board that we were on. Plain Jane River. That Just river. sounds right. River. Coolio. Uh, yep. Totes. So the three people that you rescued um, begin to make ready to depart into the forest. I look at you and say, are you sure you don't want to go back that way towards civilization? Well, I think we're sure. Uh, soon. Soon. We got something we want to take care of. You know, we're new to the area. Kind of want to sightsee a bit, you know? Is your, where can we find you? You can ask a, you can ask around Oakhurst. Looks like that's where we're gonna have to head to, to rebuild and recoup our losses. One of these days we plan to open a shop in Mirror Bar. Oh yes, very good. Well I suppose we'll find you in uh, Oakhurst one day. Well, safe travels and good luck as they pick up themselves and head off into the woods. Once they're kind of uh, out of earshot, I'm, I want to call Jocelyn over. Hey, 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 Jocelyn, come here for a minute. Uh, she wanders over, a little skeptical, puffing away at her pipe, having a morning smoke. Smoking a pancake? No. Um, um, you like treasure, right? You like finding treasure and getting treasure. Can't say I've had much experience in it, but... But I'm sure it's something you enjoy. I think I would. Now, of course, you know, it's not something you could have done alone, right? So you kind of invested in us so that we could come and we could help you get treasure. Make sense? Well, yeah, I couldn't carry it all back myself. Exactly. Now, when you spend your treasure, let's say you want to buy yourself a nice shiny weapon. Um, 
Would you rather spend 10 gold on that weapon or just two gold on that weapon? Well, two gold, of course. Oh, absolutely. That way you keep more of your treasure, you can buy more stuff. The reason I bring this up is that sometimes, Jocelyn, you have to invest in people. Like the three we just rescued. They may not be able to help us now, but later down the road, once they get their merchandise going, they could give us a friendly discount. Sometimes it pays to, to stop and just help the random stranger, the good guys, uh, because it helps us in the long run. Just something I kind of wanted you to keep in mind. Kind of takes this information in, ponders it a bit. I suppose. I've just never had much use for people. Well, you're making use of people now. And a goblin. I'm people, I think. We're business partners. Still people. He may be green, but uh, he speaks nothing but uh, truth. Little dude does have a point. But not meaning to stall. I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts on it. She kind of takes in all of the uh, agreement uh, of the wise words spoken. Doesn't offer any uh, counterpoints and just kind of ponders it. Looking off towards the mountain, she says, well, the map says it's that way. Let me see that map again, please. Very well. She hands it to you. Intent here is to verify using my innate ability to know where I am and where I'm going. Uh, to you know, verify I, I, uh, we know which way we're going and it's the right way. You have an innate ability to know where you're at and well, where you're going? <laughs> not necessarily innate, but you know... I, I do have a way with maps and a way with forests and a way with knowing where to go. Are you are you triggering some mechanic? Is that what I'm asking? Or I would say yeah. Like I'm expecting a I was expecting a survival check. You are asking. The for, well, yeah. I mean, survival check is what I was going to have you do, but I didn't know if you had some racial trait or oh, something, or class trait no. that was, you just know these things. Ah, he has. No, uh, he has. Like, I was like, that's new. Um, he has 24 passive survival. Evidently. <laughs> Is that a thing? Can you do that? No, that's not a thing. <laughs> I, no. I, I do have a plus six on survival, but no. Yeah. You get, uh, as a ranger ability, you get uh, to double that proficiency bonus to the roll there. I thought that was automatically range. included in the sheet. I don't think it is. Uh, it's not, because oh. it can't determine what terrain you're actually on. So you have to be sure, like, oh, yeah, we're in forest. I know how to get through the forest. That's oh, my I'm using a bunch of optional features, so I don't actually know if I have that. So that's a, that's a, he's a, he's a ranger a, ability. You, oh. you, you replace it with the optional feature, though. Oh, okay. Oh, I need a survival check. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Did you take in this map? No one. No one. No one. No, oh, that's not the greatest. Uh, that would be a... Fifteen. All right. So taking in the detail of the map, uh, she is indeed right. It is that way. Um, there looks to be a few notable landmarks, stones of a particular you know, design or color that, that are noted on the map that winds its way through the foothills and into the mountains. Um, it does look like there'll be a little bit of a, a journey as you will be changing elevation based on the you know, where you're at and what's ahead of you. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll start to fold the map up, stop myself, look at her, roll my eyes, and then roll the map up and hand it to her. And say so back and... <laughs> All right, let's get on the trail. So I assume you'll take your boat across. It's a safe assumption. Is that the direction the they were taking the... Uh... The prisoners too that we're headed, yeah, which is northward. Kill them prisoners. Yes, northward. Okay, but uh, yeah. the reason yeah. reason I bring it up is because um, that's where the leader said their camp was. 
So we might be a little cautious heading northward. I'll keep my eyes open. Luck does uh, favors the prepared, for sure. Cool, so we're heading over. Yeah, so you take your boat across, um, you pull it ashore, and... Should we disguise the boat so those bandits don't come back and take it? Or hide it somewhere if we can? It's not a bad idea. I'm like, cover it up with, like, branches and leaves and shit. No, just, okay. just the branches and leaves. We'll leave the shit out. <laughs> Uh, might like give me a survival check with um, advantage. I love the ambience playing right now. Eleven. You do what you can with what you have available. You throw a bunch of stuff over the top, and now it just kind of looks like a mound of random vegetation in the shape of a boat. <laughs> but you feel pretty good about it. Good enough. I make pretty. So, the party is loaded up. Um, if you're leaving anything behind in the boat, please mark it into your inventory. Uh, otherwise, I assume you are carrying everything and trying to walk up the uh, path with uh, fully loaded packs. Absolutely. I'm going to leave my old armor in the boat just for now. Okay. And that's all you leave behind? Yeah. Okie dokie. So, the party begins heading up the path. It's dusty and at least the cool air coming off the mountains and uh, the morning, uh, having not heated the day quite enough, uh, gives you some reprieve. Although it is a hefty climb as you begin to, to move through the foothills. By midday, you are at the base of uh, the spine of the world. And there's clearly, uh, according to the map, and Carl kind of checking it over with Jocelyn a few different times, it's clearly one of the indicators um, that you are on the correct path. The path ahead does look rather steep, somewhat treacherous. Um, and as you navigate it, Pi, with your keen eye, you help the party avoid pitfalls uh, as you begin to climb uh, elevation. Are there any signs of recent, like, foot traffic from humans? Give me a nature check. Nature. Uh, I, 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 will, I would also right. be looking for that, so I would be Survival helping. Check. Survival check. Yeah, Survival. I will help. Because that, that also is something I would be doing, like looking for tracks. Okay. You roll too. Survival oh, you or roll nature? Or just help? No, you, you roll as well. Oh, okay. Survival or uh, nature? Survival. Take the higher roll. Okay. Take the higher roll. Uh, survival. Nine! That's. that's that, 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 that was the universal sound of natural one, so um, we'll, just, we'll just forget that one. Other than the odd footprint here and there, there's no discernible tracks. Okay. Uh, so you continue forward. It's probably mid to late afternoon at this point. You look behind you and you can see the valley and the, or the, the river and the foothills that you've crossed. Um, looking at the map. Uh, it, it clearly shows that you're heading in the right direction, but the path itself is becoming quite narrow. Um, and it almost in places no more than a foot or two wide. As it kind of snakes around a bend uh, at this particular rock outcropping on, on the mountainside. Uh, Ty, you see off to the side, very well camouflaged, 
um, what appears to be a small game path that looks like it may snake off into a different direction. Which way would the party like to go? Jocelyn, you've been here before? No, I've never been this far. What was your story about the men falling in the trap you didn't tell them about? What do you mean? Didn't you say that you got the map? Oh, you got the map somewhere else and they fell into a trap. Oh. They went into a place I knew was trapped. Which is, them. which is what we're approaching, right? No, no, that was a different... That was way oh, back in... Oh, my bad, my bad. One of the abandoned dwarven caves. Well, there appears only be one path here. Let's... I guess we have one choice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I was like I said that because I knew you were going to respond. I look at you. anyway. Sorry, motherfucker. <laughs> yes, there are, there appears to be two pa paths here. Uh, one is the one we're on right now, and the one is a uh, welcome shield. It appears to be uh, one that uh, I suppose hunters would use. I, well, now that we know where the other one is, I'd like to look for tracks on the other one to see if it looks like it's a little more you if it has been used. Only a survival check. Moonweaver guide you. Nothing but survival checks tonight. That's all we're doing. Okay, that's... Hey, that's at least not a one. Uh, that would be... Plus D4. Yeah, so I'm going to make you guys watch me roll physicals. No, it's fine. I love hearing it. Uh, let's see. 17... 20. That is a dirty 20. The dirty 20, you see more than one set of footprints, but boot prints. Going both ways or just one way? Oh, I'm sorry, down the down the game path. Okay. Looks like there is some humanoid ahead of us. There's some boot tracks going down the game path. If we're going to go that way, definitely keep an eye. I'm guessing it's related to those guys we dispatched back there. Anything on the normal like path? Uh, yeah, did same roll for the normal path there, or you want me another one? I'll look for the normal path. You will look. There you go. Beautiful. Congratulations, my late. Uh, 23. Thank you. I think you can... Oh, sorry, what uh, are you looking for exactly? Tracks. What are we saying congratulations to my leak for? Uh, my vehicle just got delivered to the dealership. Nice. <laughs> nice. I was lo I'm looking for uh, uh, I want to see how well used the path the, the main path is as opposed to the path that shoots off going forward. Uh, so the, the narrow path that, that goes along the cliff face. Yeah. So you, you look at that one. You roll the what, 13? I rolled a 23. Oh, 23. With a 23, you see that uh, other than the odd hoof print, um, there doesn't appear to be any any human tracks. As well, we should know that somebody is on the uh, the game path, and we can just leave them alone. There's there's no reason to interject ourselves into something that might be messy. This narrow path leads us where we want to go. I say we follow it. As it seems wise enough. I don't know much about such terrains, but I uh, will take your word for it. Jocelyn, consulting with the map, says, but it shows that it's this way. Which way is she pointing? The game trail? Which way? The narrow, the narrow uh, path. Yeah, that's what Ty was saying. That is so, that is what I was saying. Yep. My apologies. I thought you were going down the game path. No, no, no. I was recommending against the game path. Ah, okay. Sorry, misread or misheard. In that case, who's going Jocelyn, first? you're so stupid. Pay attention, Jocelyn. 
She's doing fine. Don't worry about him. He's a grumpy old man. <laughs> so who's going first across this narrow path? I, I, I'll, I'll kind of sigh because it would be nice. You never know; those guys could have had some, some fun stuff to take. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at this path. Well, uh, I mean, yes, Carl, you are a ranger, no? So it's time for you to, uh, how do you say, range? Uh, in in the back of the party, there's going to be an old man. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo! Uh, I left way harder than that. It's funny. <laughs> Time to do silly rangers things. All right. So uh, as you kind of eke out on the path, you feel a few stones loose under your foot, kind of tumble down over the side, bouncing off the walls, echoing. Um, you know, get down the sheer face. Uh, you begin to move. The wind is blowing, and uh, I need a. Uh, I guess this would be a acrobatics check. Acrobatics. Moving. Well, the wind. Let me put it this way: the wind is blowing, and you begin to kind of lose your 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 grip. And how do you react? The wind is blowing, losing grip. Like, because uh, you're having to almost like like hug the rock wall and kind of scooch. Are we sorry? Are we all in this position, or is it just Carl that's struggling? Just him for now. He's just, he's like maybe ten to fifteen feet in front of where the rest of the party is kind of waiting to begin their cross. And I see him struggling. I mean, you, would, you would see like the wind, you see a couple of loose rocks slip beneath his feet. It looks like he may be about to lose his balance. I, um, when we're not on a tight ledge, are we? We're just on a path to say to so, so to speak. Yeah. Like you're, you're basically at the, the, the top of the funnel that goes onto this little thing that goes out around a rock outcropping. That's almost sheer face down. Trying to visualize. I can either... well, like sco scooting along a narrow thing, like like so you you know you're flat against the rock and there's probably like a yay, oh yeah, yeah it's, it's it's like less than a foot you know at, at the narrowest part, um, which he's like trying to navigate across right now. The wind's blowing, the ground's unstable and difficult. Okay, I will Feel yourself lose your balance, Carl. What are you doing? Well, yeah, I... thinks about things. A Sarah thinks like I would have tried to like. And I kind of like drop my center of mass a little bit, but staying in like you know, just general regain balance. Okay, so that will be a, that will be an acrobatics then. Well, I I already rolled, and I'm going to stick with it because it was bad. Uh, it would have been a seven total. Seven total. Okay, so you begin to to wobble and lean back, losing your balance. Lee, what are you doing? I am going to mold the earth around him uh, to give him more of a foothold. And uh, basically, I will m remove some of the earth behind him to give him basically a wider space and then sort of just, yeah, just make it bigger and easier for him to move around. So there's not a whole lot of debris, debris. in the area that you're trying to but there is a decent amount of loose rock there and you kind of swirl it around it ca crawls up his kind of ankles and locks his feet in place tries to stretch out a few of them to get it a wider ledge is that what we're trying to kind of do or are you wanting to do something different you don't have a ton of material to work with uh, is it possible the the face that he's pressed up against is it possible to manipulate that or is that pure stone that is that is solid rock solid okay. rock okay um, yeah, I just want to, as best I can, get loose rock around to give him a bit more of a ledge. Okay, so you mold some earth around it, widening the ledge just uh, uh, ever so slightly. Um, Carl, give me one more acrobatics check to try to s take advantage of this uh, wider ledge. Okay, dice. Don't 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 screw me, man. Eh. Uh, that would be an 11. 
Okay. <laughs> um, so you stumble on the ledge gets a little bit wider. You step on it and some of the loose rock that was used to make it, your foot slips out from underneath it and you just cannot uh, regain your balance and you begin to fall off the ledge. Make me one final athletics check to grab hold of the ledge and hold on. If he looks like he's about to fall, I'm going to cast Feather Fall if he falls off. Okay. Athletics is not great, but we're going to see what happens. Eh, it's a nine. With everything? Yeah. It's a now. I rolled a ten. I rolled a ten, and it's minus one. Now, you fall, you flail wildly, your hand goes to try to catch the ledge, it hits the ledge, can't grab hold of it as you slip and begin to fall. What's happening, Ken? Now, just going, Jocelyn, now you see, that's how you don't cross a ledge. So, Lee, you see him begin to free fall. I uh, pull Feather out as a reaction and um, put Feather fall on him so he doesn't fall, however far down it is like so well slowly you're, you're basically kind of going parallel to what if any no no you you guys are fine okay <laughs> so hand signals <laughs> um so, god damn it ty <laughs> i do way too many of these zoom meetings at work or teams uh, 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 uh yes i know I uh, okay so you begin to fall Seraphix, uh, or Veshmir, reaches out, cast Featherfall, and you begin to slow your descent. Um, the rock face in front of you has got a few jagged places here and there. That you might be able to get a handhold as you kind of drift down. Uh, below you looks to be about 100 feet before you get down to where you can uh, put your feet. As you slow your fall. Yeah, so real quick mechanical question, because this is going to determine what I want to do. Because uh, I would presume I would know this, being okay. of this world. I would know roughly what happens when you're feather fold. But the question is, when you're feather fold, let's, let's say if I happen to throw a rope to somebody and I pulled, would it, am, am I like, effectively weightless? Or like to pull me in, it's like my full weight. Basically, it says... As if the creature lands before the spell ends, it takes no falling damage and can land on its feet. The spell ends for that creature. So flavor-wise, I'm just having you fall a little bit slower. Right. So what I was what I was thinking what I was thinking you do one of two things. Uh, one, to see if I can grab a rope from my hip. Oh, that's that takes so much time. I was gonna say tie it to an arrow and clink. And throw it up there so that the guy, somebody could grab it and wheel me in. Yeah, you're, you're probably not falling that slow. Okay, so in that case, we'll try to we'll just try to grab on. Okay, give me an athletics check. No. As you stick your hand out and try to grab hold of this rock face. It's, it's almost it's almost more fun when the dice are rolling crappy, but <laughs> I'd like them to stop now. Oh, that's good. That would be a seventeen. Not enough. You put your hand. You put your hand out. It slides down the start, the start face of this and uh, catches, and you stop your descent. And you are now hanging on the side of this cliff. There's maybe about a hundred feet below you, sixty feet above you. You're it's hanging well, on almost the sheer rock face. I. Not sure if that's better. Vesmia casts levitate on Carl. And okay. so That's you, kind of foot you move up and down 20 foot um, either on your t per turn, per round. But so uh, 20, yeah. 20 foot per six seconds. And then what's the duration? Uh, it is Thanks. 10 minutes. Okay. That sounds like it's enough to, I could levitate back up to the, yeah, and I mean, with Levitate, too, like, you can move yourself a little bit, you know, the, the whole thing with Levitate is if you don't have something to push on it, you're, like, weightless, basically. Yep. So, um, you just kind of scurry up the uh, the rock face and get back to to the ledge. You're able to pull yourself on it. Uh, your hand hurts um, from catching yourself, and 
Your heart's pounding a little bit, but you're on your two feet on the ledge again. What would you well, like to do? That was embarrassing. Um, I'm actually going to pull my pack off and grab some pitons. And realizing my mistake, start anchoring some pitons. Uh, I still have at least two 50-foot uh, lengths of rope, so I intend to get get a little handhold along the edge of this uh, this 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 path while my levitate is rolling. Um, Vinny is also going to go out, help get a piece of the rope, and bring it back to the party. Okay. Hopefully, being smaller, he won't have as hard of time going across this ledge. All right. So you uh, you go out and you get all your um, on situated. Um, and begin to kind of cross the ledge. Um, with the batons and the rope in place and the slow going and lessons learned at this point, the party's have able to navigate this hazard with minimal difficulties. Now, see, Jocelyn, Ooh. this is how you correctly cross a ledge. <laughs> Jocelyn has a very tight hold on the rope as she uh, navigates her way across. Um, but uh, with all the batons and, and work on into this, uh, we don't need to make any checks to cross this hazard. As, well, as Vesemir gets off of it, I'm going to slap him on the back and say, I owe you one. And then he falls off the edge. <laughs> uh, don't worry. You can... Uh, gold is always acceptable. Uh, yes, it is. He just smiles and, and walks on the rest of the path with the rest of the party. So after coming around the bend, uh, this rock outcropping... Um, the path widens again, and you're able to navigate. Uh, this definitely does not look like it's a well-traveled path. Uh, it's very rugged and difficult terrain. It's very slow going. Um, between navigating the obstacle and the difficult terrain in front of you, night will be approaching very soon. Based on the map, you're still at least a few hours away from um, your destination. It'll be well after dark if you continue. Would I be able to discern uh, by the surrounding flora and fauna and environment, like what kind of threats we might be encountering here? Absolutely. Would we Give reasonably a... able to? Go ahead. Give me a nature check as you begin to try to recall lore that you may have read, heard. Nineteen. Stories. With a nineteen, you know that uh, some of the threats to the party would potentially be, um, uh, like those bug creatures that you. Um, faced crossing the desert that you've slayed with ease. Um, large cats that are patrolling. Um, orc and uh, trolls have been known to come up into the mountains when food is scarce. But those would be probably some of your bigger threats that you would face. Um, from the fauna, at least. Or, I'm sorry, from the flora. No, fauna. I had it right the first time. Yeah, you know. It's one of those. The animals. Things with heartbeats, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah indeed. I suppose, I, mean, I suppose, you know, it's getting late in the day that we, we eventually have to stop our journey uh, for a moment uh, anyway. I, I don't think there's anything in this area that it, this isn't something that's unfamiliar to any of us. Um, no, perhaps Jocelyn. Poor thing. Uh, she does look quite tired. Um, she's putting on a brave face, but uh, she looks borderline exhausted. Gosh, you know, Justin, it's it's important to uh, advocate uh, for yourself. If you are tired, you should say so. We get tired too. We, I can the, pull my own weight. She says sharply back. Okay, so we we shall keep going then. Everybody okay with keeping going? I'm tired, uh, but yes, sir. I'll go with you guys. <laughs> the suggestion of uh, to continue the journey, Jocelyn's face, you can see it kind of contort. I'm just gonna give her the. She's a uh, well. You know, I'm not. A, I'm not opposed. You know, to to taking a a break. Maybe we should rest till morning. We'll have better light when we approach it. Ah, it's very good. Yes, you flex your wisdom. That's good. 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 Jocelyn, we need firewood. He looks around. I, I haven't seen any trees in a while. Is there no sticks? Is there nothing? Um, she. Looks strange. She finds a little bit, and she's like, "I'll have to go, you know, uh, you know, around the path. It doesn't look to be much here, but I'll gather what I can." I should be safe. Don't stray too far. 
Vinny will help her. Uh, and Vesmia will adjust density on her, giving her um, essentially an enhanced strength. Between pulling off the pack that she's been carrying today and um, the spell, the, the, is the, it the just density, uh, she definitely feels much lighter on her feet. Like spring in her step as she sets out with Vinny to try to um, procure some, some burnable tinder and firewood. Uh, Vinny, why don't you give me a survival check with advantage since Jonathan's helping? Sounds fine. Hmm. 21. All right. Well, with that 21, you are able to find a decent amount of sticks and dried grass here and there. And uh, on the way back to camp, somewhat defeated, you stumble across a large dry log. Should suit your purposes nicely. Ooh, this looks nice. I'll start dragging that back. Jocelyn pitches in and drags it back to the camp. What's everybody else doing while they're off looking for firewood? Um, while they're doing that, I would like to set up the augury ritual. Okay. With the question of, um, is it safe to stay here? That's so it, and my options are. Your options are good results bad results, mixed, or nothing. My question is, are you safe to stay here? Right. Get good results back. Actually, I'm getting good signs from the stars, gentlemen. Uh, it feels like we can, uh, we can probably get a good night's sleep here, especially with this fire in, the, in this environment. It doesn't seem like the, the path is, is very well traveled. And uh, unless those fellows, um, those hunters, I assume they're hunters, um, give us any trouble, don't foresee us losing any sleep. It works for me. My hand is still a little sore. Yes, that was, uh, that was quite embarrassing, I must say. You can't win them all. Ah, as well, I'm an old man, that's why I didn't go first. Yes? <laughs> Next time, I'll anchor myself. No, it's, it's probably a good lesson for Jocelyn. She thinks she can handle things on her own, but uh, many of these journeys are not completed uh, individually. And this Jocelyn is called a stink bug. If you poke it, oh, it emits a foul loader. Great for practical jokes. Are they back with us? <laughs> They're on their way back. You can see okay. them kind of approaching. Gosh, look, there they are now. And look, they found a log. It's perfect. We come back and start setting up the firewood. Sorry, my dog's going bananas at the moment. Give me a minute. Oh, I love bananas. Oh, Calvary, just helping set everything up. Yeah. Cow. Cow. Damn it, what is your name in this stupid game? Calvin? Carl. <laughs> Carl. Carl. Right. Has, Carl, uh, has Justin had a good berry? I don't recall if she has. You did, yes. Because yeah, we did, we did. there was enough for everyone and he had like uh, four left or whatever. So I do remember you specifically giving one to her. Yeah, she smelled it and watched y'all eat it. Right. And it. There you go. Yes, she did. Did you know, Jocelyn, I bet if you asked, Carl would uh, produce some more. We don't have to go to sleep hungry. We don't have to eat some of those travel rations. Oh. Mm, travel rations aren't that bad. Oh, she's a young thing. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> but they're they're not as bad. They're not bad compared to good berries. So I'll take the sprig of mistletoe out of my pack. Rub my hands together slowly, concentrate as a green flash appears, and then there's my ten good berries in my hand, and I'll extend one to her. He uh, takes one, 
pops it in her mouth, chews it, kind of grimaces. Just like, I can't say I'm a huge fan of these, but they do fill me up. Ah! And then, yeah, let everybody else, if they wanted to take a good berry. Oh, we Better said than lost, taking uh, rations. Uh, yeah, he said he had to reset his connection. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll happily take one as well. And uh, after that, I will position myself probably against a rock face if something like that exists and probably fall asleep. Before you drift to sleep. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm this, trying to fall asleep then. At this, alt- at this altitude, the lack of cloud cover, the stars gleam brilliant. Constellations almost come alive to your eyes as you take in this view, one that most people don't get to see at such low altitudes. Um, and on a clear night, I mean, you can see stars within stars, nebulae, um, all of the heavens kind of split out in front of you. It's a breathtaking Gosh, I, view. I haven't seen anything like this since uh, my time in Seljunt. It makes me dream of Sembia. The desert, it's just so clear. There's, there's no... Uh, there's nothing in the way of seeing the sky. It's just land is flat as far as you can see, and beautiful. lights are clear. Oh yes, you you can see the the, the beautiful array above us. It's just uh, all of the constellations, and uh, point out over here is, is you see here's my friend the archer, right? And uh, I think many of you have seen the chalice uh, before. And uh, this mean fellow over here, he's uh, that is the dragon. Uh, and uh, I don't think you've seen that one from me yet, um, but he is a real. Uh, how did you say? Uh, he's a real son of a bitch. Yes. Do they all have names? Jocelyn asks. It seems there's so many of them. Ah, oh, there's, there's uh, uh, countless. It's yes, there there are quite a few. Um, my my circle, my my, my group of druids, we focus in on, on just the three main ones that we seem to be able to draw uh, some type of power from: um, the archer, the dragon, and the chalice. You can see them. They're all my ropes, all over the place. I've seen your ribs light up. Yes, it's, it's important to know that it's actually the robes are just decoration. Um, the magic, though, that's just something that I've learned. So when the robes light up, that is, uh, again, it's just magic. That actually has anything to do with the robes. If I were to be wearing a, a just a simple cloth sack cloth, it would light up as well. Do you always have the ability to do magic? Have I always had it? I, I can't recall not having it. Um, I, again, I have very early memories. Uh, but um, when I was young, maybe just a little younger than you, uh, I was promised to the uh, Druid Order in my, my home. Um, I went there to study. I was close to my family still, but I went there to study. And um, they helped me hone my craft. Um, I think I remember learning that maybe there's a little bit of um, kind of an innate ability to to cast magic in some forms and that's it's developed in some ways uh, in individuals um i know I, some never learn how to capture them and and they are uh, quite wild um some of them get it from uh, terrible circumstances or sometimes um maybe even ridiculous circumstances frankly um some make deals uh dock deals um with the devil or perhaps even uh, a fey to get their powers um, and, and some, they just, they just happen to have it. It really seems quite chaotic. It's not very helpful information. It's just, it just seems to be this way. She looks at, uh, takes all the information in. She looks at Vesmir and says, I, I haven't seen many people that look like you. <clears throat> Were you born with the ability to wield the, the magical forces as well? No, quite, uh, quite the opposite. Actually, everything, uh, everything I can do has been learnt along the way. Uh, my power continues to increase, but that is with uh, dedication, uh, focus, uh, self-preservation. Uh, only one uh, person that is strong with this himself and uh, drives himself forward uh, is the one that can. Uh, become the master of their own domain and he pulls out he just taps on the on his book says uh the spells that i know they uh i contain them with uh, within this book 
and uh, without them, uh, it, my magic would be almost uh, useless. And he tucks it away under his cloak. You learned how to do magic? Yes, uh, magic is uh, is definitely uh, you can uh, learn the arcane arts. I've always been fascinated by it, but I've never seen. I thought you had to have been born with it. No, it's particularly no. And um, he starts to do some cantric magic. He uses his mage hand to ruffle the trees and, and break some grass blades up and then he molds the earth a little bit around and creates some uh, visual effects with his prestidigitation and uh, no, this uh, this can all be taught and uh, there's no limit to possibility when uh, one has uh, dedication and uh, I can actually attest to that because you know, I was born a goblin. We ain't born magical people. But uh, through my own studies and practices songs and uh, even inspiration from our uh, old man over here, uh, I've learned a few uh, magical tricks uh, along the way. So you can forge your own path if you're dedicated enough. Did y'all teach me to do something? Uh, that all depends on uh, how much of a learner you are willing to be. I'm very willing to learn. Uh, yes, but uh, how focused are you is the next best question. And uh, don't be hasty to answer that because uh, actions speak louder than words. You also might want to think about you know, figuring out the different types of magic. Um, cause you can't obviously learn it all, but, uh, there's some that are inspired by gods. Some who get it from research and books. Some who were born with it. Uh, some were Maybelline, you know, there's all different types of sources. It's, it's very important that you know, that you, it can be very dangerous. Uh, and, and you, you can do very good things and very terrible things, but it can come from dangerous sources itself, right? So it's not just the magic itself that is dangerous, but it's where it comes from that's also very dangerous. So like, Esmer here, who has studied, it's not a lot of danger. He is dangerous himself, but the studying is not a problem. But for instance, there are some individuals that make deals with terrible, terrible things. That is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Uh, by the way, so sorry, when my internet cut out, uh, Vesmir was actually going to be doing his Find Familiar uh, ritual and recasting uh, his familiar back into a rat because it was an octopus. Oh, I like uh, the octopus. Yes, but uh, he does not like to be out of the water, so... Well, that's why you were using shape water, so he could still breathe. Yes, but uh, for me, this this is best. That's fair. All right. Well, Jocelyn says, "Well, I don't know what I, what path I'll end up taking, but it seems like being able to cast a few spells would be pretty useful." Yes, yes, it's it's very useful, but uh, there are other ways to be useful that are very important as well. Like, how do you mean? Well, it's just being able to fight. You know, you being able to use that sword of yours. Being able to navigate. Yeah, that half orc over there, he's he's saved us a, a few pickles. You know, he's he's a tough one, so. You know, magic isn't always uh, the route for everyone. Uh, she kind of lays her sword out and everything and gets her uh, bed ready and ponders all of the advice as she drifts off. Is there anybody else doing anything? 
Oh, All right. we'll be. Well, the party lays down and gets a restful night. Cool air. You awaken to the sun. You know, uh, rays casting across the forest and the river below. It's a beautiful uh, scene uh, as you begin to stir awake. It's peaceful. A few birds here and there, but not much else. I'm going to stand up and make all of the typical old man dad morning noises. <laughs> you can wake the dead with that ruckus. <laughs> Dodge, That's well, you'll be old too one day. Well, elves, <laughs> one day. Uh, Jocelyn likes to be in an exceptionally good mood. She says, this is the day that we become rich. <clears throat> she packs up her bedroll and fastens her rapier to her belt. Uh, she seems to be ready before anybody else is. Jocelyn, what do you think you'll do with all your gold? I don't know. I've been giving that some thought. You she could always just give it all away. I don't think that's very likely. <laughs> no, certainly not. Think of this. If you want to be an adventurer, you can get comfortable armor. You can get a sword belt that fits. You can get a nice pack. Uh, the best rations. There's all sorts of things you could do. No more sleeping on the floor of an inn. You can go get a good room. You could buy the inn. You could buy a horse. You could buy a horse. Yeah, but then you gotta boat. feed it, and you gotta <laughs> clean it, and you gotta, you know, it poops everywhere. I don't know if that's a good idea. I'll take really good care of it, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, she seems pretty set in her mind. She wants to buy all of the things you described, and a horse. <laughs> She's going to name it Buttercup. <laughs> Most horses I've spoken to are very pretentious. You speak to horses? <laughs> when you're in the woods and around nature, you usually can... You can find ways to speak oh, yes. to animals. I hear this is an elf thing. All elves do it. It's an elfy thing. Yeah, he loves to nag them all the time. <laughs> are you casting hideous laughter? No, not this time. I'm going to fall over laughing. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Uh, all right. So, the party readies themselves for the coming day. You set out on the path. The less traveled, rugged, difficult terrain. You continue to make a slow pace up the mountain. Uh, but the map... Tells you that you're on the right track. I'd say probably around um, late morning, almost noon, uh, you come to a small junction that, Ty, you can clearly see. Um, it looks to be a game path um, merges into the path that you are on. And then with your keen perception, you notice at least one or two boot prints, which is more than you've seen since you... Uh, Across the narrow little ledge. So it would be safe to assume that the boot prints that were going on at the game ledge have now merged onto the main path? Yes. Cool. I sh it appears that our, uh, our potential hunters are now on the same path as us. We uh, uh, better keep a keen eye. So when I say game path, I mean like a path that like, you know, deer would follow and things of that nature. Not, sure. not a hunting. Okay, I just want to get clear. Perhaps this. Yeah, that's this my character's treasure. assumption. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Perhaps this treasure is not as secret as you think it is, Jocelyn. Which I've never known a, a treasure to say secret for very long. Her eyes narrow and she almost hisses. <laughs> if they've taken the treasure, I'll kill them and take it for myself. I believe you would. Uh, 
Oh, no sense in wasting, and she starts walking down the path. Oh, it's very important we get that flush then. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you eventually come to um, almost what what appears to be a dead end. Uh, kind of like the, the path like, kind of ends in this little cul-de-sac of a canyon. And there is a narrow path that kind of cuts into the rock wall that leads up to what appears to be an entrance to a cave. Um, uh, boot tracks are going into that cave? Yes. Like how they go up the little path. How fresh are they? Um, for that, you need to give me a nature check. Nature? Okay. No, I'm sorry, not nature, survival. Okay. I, I keep saying the wrong one. That's a nat 20, baby, for a 28. Within within the last day. Okay. I was gonna, I'll take my time in minutes, please. <laughs> last day is good. There are Buddhist friends. Uh, they are... Well, they are very clearly ahead of us, but uh, they're rather recent. Maybe a day, maybe less. As you investigate this, you hear the clanging of what sounds like the crash of a couple pots. And cursing in a language you don't understand. I'm going to ins... Clearly infer the inflection. But it is cursing. And it's uh, it's ahead of us? It's, it's coming from the cave mouth. Oh, shit. Oh yes, oh yes. And as he enters the cave, I'm gonna give him some sparkles. Okay, so as you head in towards the cave, are you going stealth? I'm assuming. I I would be trying to be stealthy as possible. Oh uh, no, yes, absolutely. What is you know basically high noon at this point? There's very little shadows um, or coverage that allows. Um, shadows really to to you to you utilize in this manner. I would just be trying not to make sound until I can get in the cave. Sounds good. So give me a stealth roll. Twenty one. The twenty one. Uh, it takes a moment. The the blazing brightness, the reflection off the stone itself. Um, you know, as you kind of peer into the cave, it is quite dark, and it takes a moment for your eyes to adjust. But you see um, movement and what looks to be a pale dwarven-shaped creature. Um, looks very similar to some of the ones you encountered in the forge. And he looks to be chained to the rock face, and he is working on something at his workbench. in Tailspire, if we want to go ahead and jump to Mountain Cave. So yeah, the intent that uh, upon seeing him would go, you know, return to the, the, the group and let them know. So we probably, we probably could all safely enter the cave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the problem at hand. So um, basically, where where Carl like um, you would have come around and kind of seen that the, that guy there, he kind of peeked around the corner. You went back and got the party. Um, from this kind of like point where you're at now, for it, it is rather dim in here. Um, the the you are in a cave. There's just not a roof. Which I guess I could change the lighting. To my immersion. Carl, what did you see? What was making that racket? It looks like a Durger is chained to the wall, working on something. A dwarf? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm assuming that this whole conversation is happening a little bit further back. I just wanted to bring you all to the board. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah I would say so about Yay Tall. That's a dwarf. So... The danger looks to be minimal. We could uh, we could all go in there and I guess talk to this guy, this, this Durger. Can anybody challenge uh, him? 
I could. I don't do mean you kill want him. To... Oh. Do you hmm. mean just make him not be able to speak? They like said silence. Yes, there's many, many varieties of silence. I believe he's talking the arcane variety that uh, does not cause bloodshed unnecessarily. Unfortunately, Jeez. this is not in my repertoire. And Vinny Pops is not in his either. I can draw natural abilities and silence him, but is it necessary? He's chained to a wall. Oh, let's just go talk to him then. Well, uh, I don't uh, believe that uh, I, anybody here speaks Dwarven uh, or uh, Jocelyn. Uh, do you have a hidden talent for Dwarvish that we do not know about? Ellie? I'm sorry, what was that? Does Jocelyn, Jocelyn was asked if she knew, knows Dwarvish. Uh, she says she's picked up a little bit, like conversational Dwarvish from those that passed through Blassingdale. Well, uh, do you think that uh, you could be uh, the diplomat here and uh, find out what this... Uh, Durga's uh, or Dwarven uh, situation would be? You want me to go ask him what? <laughs> trying to look surprised at this request. Well, uh, we're not sure if this is uh, a hostile dwarf or not, and uh, sometimes it is not best to uh, go guns blazing, if so to speak. She says, um, sure, y'all are going to go with me, though, right? You won't see me, but I'll be around. We've got your back. Sorry. Yes, uh, I think uh, it would be good, uh, Talga, to be uh, very close behind, and I will uh, make my presence known also. Yes, come on, Justin, let's go. With the word that Telgar is going to follow closely behind, she's a little bit more confident in her survival chances, and so she summons the courage and follows you up. Um, Carl, Jocelyn, and Talgar kind of work their way back up to the mouth of the cave and begin heading into where Carl saw the Durger. As you approach it, you hear a, another voice speaking in a the same language, but in a very broken, accent-heavy way. Uh, Jocelyn says that, you know, translated basically, somebody says, uh, you two need to hurry it up. I don't want to be out here all day. This is coming from within the room? Somewhere, yeah, somewhere in the room. And, and you know, as you've kind of gotten closer and peered in a little bit, uh, you see that there's uh, at least additional dirt or change to the other desk. Uh, the voice emanating from somewhere else in the room. If the room is dark enough for me to be invisible, I, I would like to sneak in and just get a better view. Uh, the tables look to be lit by lantern, and there does to be uh, look to be a small fire in front of a tent uh, and table. The, the, there's enough shadows in there that you could uh, probably sneak in invisibly. I will still need a stealth roll for noise, smell, yep. and all of the other accompanying things. Sure thing. Uh, stealth seven. Yay. You rolled a seven for stealth? Uh, no, so it was, it was a plus seven. So it's currently an 11, but I get a D4 because of Ranger things. Um, 
that was 12, 18 total. Okay, so you feel quite in, quite one with the shadows as you dart place to place. Um, Jocelyn's kind of like hanging around the corner, not sure what to do. Talgar and the rest of the party not far behind. Carl, what are you doing? Oh, you, you're moving in. So you should be yeah, there. moving in to see if I can discern the source of that other voice. Yeah, so you see a... Uh, uh, I can tuck him in here. You see a guy dressed very much like some of the ones that you confronted at the river earlier. Uh, sitting at a table. He looks to have a tankard and there's some bread. He looks to just kind of made himself at home and you see two dirty uh, Durger um, working away with some different uh, dark powders. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I would like to sneak up behind the human to see if I can sneak up behind him and get a knife on, uh, against his throat <laughs> uh, with the intent to interrogate. It would be very difficult to kind of sneak up behind him where he's kind of tucked out over there. You could try that. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, you're right, because I would see there's light. Okay. So here's the, 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 the play would then be I would go back out to the rest of the group and have a conversation. Um, so you go back. You, and if uh, Carl relays all that information and uh, he expresses his intent, uh, Vesmia pulls out a potion of invisibility from his backpack, and this uh, might be uh, useful then for what you were trying, yes? Or, and then Carl just lays a hand on his chest and, and, and vanishes from sight in the light. I could do that, but thank you. Uh, out of character, I, I have a once per day class based <laughs> invisibility. And you just used it. And I just used it. Kind of duration are we talking? Standard up to one hour. It is concentration, so I can't Hunter's Mark or anything while it's up, but... Well, if uh, you are invisible, Jocelyn's eyes grow wide. Okay. Uh, and so to the party, let them know, uh, I intend to go and try to get the jump on our, our bandit buddy in there. Uh, if you guys hear it go sideways, a little help would be appreciated. We are uh, right behind you, and uh, Vesmia uh, reaches, sort of leans into Jocelyn and says, this is some of the magic that uh, if you're willing to dedicate, uh, you could easily learn. This is basic magic. Talgar readies his sword to rush in if need be. Okay, there you so. go. That, that, that's the intent. Uh, all right, so Carl, you uh, sneak into the room as you approach the table, very stealthily cat-like. Um, you see that he's, he's there, he's got a hunk of bread in his hand, the tankard in his other hand. He seems to be kind of leaned back, taking swigs in between bites of the bread. Um, you slip in out of the shadows behind him. What do you do? I would actually be aware. Yeah, the, the, oh, yeah, then just coming up behind him, uh, trying to get one arm. The first thing I want is the blade to go near his, near his throat without touching him and whisper in his ear, do not move. There is a blade against your throat. Do not scream or you will die. A mid-sip after kind of half chewing a bite full of bread, mid-sip this, this whisper comes into his voice. His eyes go wide. He chokes a little bit spits out some of the bread and beer. It just still is a fucking church mouse, just not moving. What is this? What is going on here? Explain yourself. It slowly kind of just drops the tankard. Oh, what, do, what do you mean? What are you doing who with these burger? My who I am is of no consequence. I'm, I'm just making sure they don't run off. Who do you work for? Why? Why are you? What are you even doing in this cave? <laughs> I 
very quiet. He's, he's trying to think quickly of his options. I'm not a patient man. And I push the, de the, the knife blade a little closer to his neck. Um, Romy in Intimidation. Advantage? Because I have a knife on his throat? <laughs> you can have advantage. <laughs> this means I don't change the DC. <laughs> That's fine. That would be a... Okay, what's my mod? That is an 18. Um, okay. Yeah. Um... He basically says, he says, how did, how did, how did you find us? How did you find our hideout? Didn't disguise it very well. It's a simple cave. Anybody can wander in. You leave boot prints all over the place. So you're clearly amateurs. Well, nobody else has been able to find it. You know, you're not going to leave him alive, right? They're, they're going to kill you all. Who? There's nothing but death behind that door in there. The Brotherhood will not tolerate outsiders interfering. I'm going to assume at this point I'm not going to get any more information out of him and would like to... Well, God, how am I going to do this? You run the blade along his throat. Let the wet stuff out. Stuff out. Actually, from a from, yeah, from a character perspective, Carl doesn't like. You know, he he holds no. Yeah, that doesn't bother him. Uh, yeah, Carl just. So you drag the knife quickly across his throat before he has a chance to react. Spills forth, spills forth blood. He has this like pleading look in his eyes and face as he tries to mouth you said he just kind of gurgles for a bit falls over clutching at his neck thrashing about for a little bit before he dies um, a pool of blood expanding around him uh, the, Durger have stopped, the yeah. Durger have stopped working at this point or standing back looking at this, this site unfold I would go invisible at that point because I would. that's an attack I would, th I would think, because that's that's the trigger for the invisibility. Yeah, traffic. yeah, you would, so I can see you. Yep. Uh, Don't okay, make so it noise. Oh, good. No, so good. I was trying to get prompt. I was go said. Yeah, I was going to look at the Durger and just say, "Don't make a noise," but then I'll call for the rest of like everybody. Come on in. Oh, Josh is very expertly. Oh, what a mesh! You so made a mesh. The the Durger kind of look everybody over as you come in. They look to be taken aback <clears throat> at the surprise uh, visitors here. They do not look very healthy, even for pale Durger. Ah, oh, you two should get back to work. Go on now. Go on now. Nothing to see here. They just kind of like lose what little sense of hope glimmered in their eye for a moment. Just kind of look downtrodden at the ground and turn. Begin working with their powders again. Uh, Vesmir from a distance will, uh, from you know, a good ten feet away, just observe what's on their tables. Can he make out what they're tinkering with? Um, give me either a history or an Arcana check. Hmm. Either either. Uh, it is a seventeen for history. Did any of us? Sorry, go ahead. Nope. I was just going to ask if any of us heard the conversation between Carl and the human. I, I'm assuming it just happened in the room with just those two, and then he okay. came and got y'all. Unless I don't, you know, don't know. When I'd be happy to summarize it uh, after Bessemer's done looking at the stuff. Yeah. So you're now privy to the information. Um, with that history roll, you would have known or heard of stories, come across it in text, 
not really alchemy, but it's a form of mixing different powders and whatnot. And if you mix the correct ratios with certain ones, um, they can be powerful tools in, in mining or explosives on the battlefield. But do they appear to have any um, completed items? Or is it just the powder at the moment? It looks to be just like they're mixing a bunch of dark powders. Do they look fearful of us or like they want to attack us? They look like very broken individuals. At, at Ty's interaction, they just kind of turned around to resign to their fate and to continue to work. Chained with heavy iron shackles to the walls. Standing before you as well is a um, heavy iron door set into solid stone. Talgar is going to go over to the two what he thinks are prisoners and give them both a ration and let them let them know that we're going to figure out what's going on and one way or the other we won't leave them there. So then take the rations from you. Um, kind of confused by it. Not sure how to react. But soon their sense of hunger kind of overwhelms that and they tear into it. Um, and begin to like wolf down the ration. Although you do notice, Ty, with your high perception, um, that they do uh, at least one or two uh, or, or of the biscuits find their way out of the, the ration pack and slipped into a pocket. Yeah. I would also like to ser search the uh, the dude I... Beat me to it. Oh, really? You are thinking the same thing? I was going <laughs> to search for a key specifically. I mean, the, so Carl's whole thing here is just trying to figure out what the hell's going on. So I, I'm, that's more what I'm, in, I'm interested in. And also kind of like looking at the table, if there's any in, in, indication exactly what's going on here. Yeah, Vinny's just going to search the body for a key, if he can find one. Yeah, you find a long sword um, in pretty good shape. Um, uh, splint mail and... Uh, You do not find a key. The uniform is very much identical to the ones that you saw. The fabric itself is kind of stuck together in a way, like different hues of red, but put together to make one whole red cloth. Um, somebody went to a lot of trouble to, to make these uniforms, as patchwork as they may be. That is the same insignia as the fellows that we met by the river. Yeah, I think this is their hideout. Oh, uh, yes, that... Yes. yes that's that's one of the reasons that uh, I think wipes his blade off. But I went ahead and dealt with them. Ah, yes, he seems like quite the son of a bitch. Hey, he um... Talking. No, he... Uh, yeah, from what you tell us, he wasn't giving you shit. It seems like he was stalling for time. Anything in the tent, Callie? That's a bedroll. It seems pretty bare, bare um, minimum stuff. Uh, Jocelyn, do you have a bedroll? Uh, yes, yeah, she does. You'll, okay, you'll cool. go, it's part of her pack that you got. Does there appear to be any finished product on these tables? There looks to be a small silver canister on each desk that looks to be about half full. But, but, you know, based on the order in which you see them kind of working, you would assume would be the final product. Hey, uh, he asked the Vinny asked the Durgers, where do you guys live, or where did you live? Uh, do you speak, or what? What, uh, what languages do you speak? Oh, I don't speak Dwarvish. Um, common, goblin, abyssal, celestial. Okay. So, you're able to kind of, through hand gestures and some common, they know a little bit of common, you're able to kind of convey um, that information. And they both they kind of, with their hand gestures, kind of try to explain, like, you know, pointing downwards. They live underground. 
Okay. I'd hate for them to have come from the Dagger Tooth Mountains when we just kind of were there and, you know, what we did. Um, and then I'll do one more gesture. Um, uh, try to indicate where the key is for their locks, if they happen to know. What if I'm kind of does it like like points back towards behind the door and then like with his arms kind of out does like the strong man like uh, kind of guy all right you know what screw this um let me look at this real quick i reach into my pouch and i take a little bit of soot and salt and i throw it on the dwarf and then i touch the dwarf and i cast comprehend languages so now this one dwarf can not only understand everything that we say, we can all understand what he says. Well, you took this is way easier. Okay. <laughs> so. Now. I live, in the, I live in the Underdark. In this mountain. Well, a few mountains over and, and down a ways. And you, you said, who has your key? The, the big guy, the one that yells a lot. How many are in that door? And he starts counting. And he goes through at least more than a hand and a half's worth and kind of shrugs a lot. Well, you guys hang tight. I look at the party. It's like, there's, okay, there's now we know what we're us, facing. There's more of us in there, too. They, they've kept us prisoner since the collapse. Huh. Would uh, your uh, fellow uh, men uh, be hostile towards us, you think? I don't know. They've beaten the fight out of us. Half starved us. Then uh, uh, you're making blasting powder. Is that what's in those vials? Indeed. Yeah, can we just fill this one with the, the remnants of the other and then have one vial of blasting powder? It's finished. Take it. It's horrid stuff. No dwarf in his right mind would be caught dead using it. I knew you were dwarfs. I knew it. I knew it. Everybody hears it, right? That's a dwarf. Of course. Of course. Well, no. What is uh, what is the word for uh, friend in uh, your language? With comprehend languages, he's, he just he says friend. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your other friend to say friend, and we'll hear it in your language. I, yeah, so he communicates. I, I don't know how to say friend in Mel lot. Mel lot. <laughs> Well, look, if uh, if your fellow uh, dwarves do not uh, mean us no harm, then they will uh, potentially escape with their lives as well, but uh, we shall see what uh, happens ahead. Well, if you could free us, we'd be mighty appreciated. Unfortunately... With the cave in, there's not a way for us to go back home. I pull out, I pull out the pickaxe, um, and place it on the table next to them. And I pull out the dwarven mining book and place it on the table next to them. It's like where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> he looks it over and is quite taken aback by this gesture. Thank you put it to good use. He starts eyeing the rock wall that holds the chain from here. If uh, these uh, appear to be mm, uh, if, uh, we have the intent to, to let them go, then uh, I think that uh, this can be done right now. And Vesmir uh, gets out his uh, canteen, um, pours water into the lock, and casts shape water to freeze it and destroy the lock mechanism. So he watches as you do this, and the lock 
burst open from the pressure of the ice forming and shackle falls free. I assume you do it to the other one as well? Yes. You have freed both Durger. They're super grateful, saying thank you. And, um, they said that, unfortunately, in our state, I don't know much how much help we'd be in a fight. We can't even enlarge right now. But we are grateful. Well, just... when you get older, that problem becomes more prevalent. It does. <laughs> um, yes, well, uh, look, uh, as long as uh, you stay out the way, it's in uh, sync that uh, we can uh, move along from here uh, peacefully. And Vesmir looks around at uh, these other party members just to sort of get a reassurance from the rest of them. Vinny will go over to the uh, the dead human, grab the long sword, and then offer it to the Durger, um, handle first. Something to help protect themselves. He takes it, kind of gives it a little Hold bit of a oh, shake, yeah. and swings it around. It says, we'll stay here, and if any try to escape, we'll give them what for. Um, sorry, Kelly, did you say that they speak under common? They do. I, Vesmia speaks under common. Well, then Vesmir can speak in his native language to them. Or <laughs> Excellent. Whatever, you know, naturally. Cool. Good can Vinny get that spell slot back? It's all right. I casted it. No, <laughs> no go ahead. Go ahead that was fun. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. It's for flavor. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just picturing yeah, Vesmir like, wait a minute. I'd give you like, the opportunity. Yeah. Boy, Gosh, well, I suppose we should go further into the cave now. Uh, Vesmir. Or, excuse me, Vesmir. <laughs> Taga, there's a door. It's about the time to wait, shine. Wait, don't we have a plan? Won't open the door, kind of alert the the guys back there? Ah, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. They'll eventually they'll know we're here. The okay. other guard, the other guard, basically just would hit the door a few times when we finished. And then they would come and get us. Oh, ambush! Oh, that's perfect. Then. Carl will get himself in a dark corner. Carl's going to wait for everybody to get in the position they want to be in. Carl engages uh, emo mode. Make sure you put your mascara on. Dye Absolutely. Then once everybody's ready, he's going to try to, to mimic this knocking that they just mentioned. Well, uh, Vesmia asks the dagger to give a representation, just to knock on the desk of what that knock sounds like, um, so that uh, Talgar can effectively repeat it. Yeah, basically it was just kind of like a couple of bangs, like bang, 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 and a few minutes later somebody would come and open the door, they would come and collect us. Um, as as Talgar is getting to do this, um, Vesmir is going to hold a ray of frost ready um, in case we engage hostiles. As much as Talgar wants to just open the door, he's going to bang, 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 bang. <laughs> okay. So is everybody where they want to be? Vinny Hodge on the side, ready to attack. Okay. So, uh, as you bang on the door, uh, I, I, you hear a voice on the other side getting louder, uh, like he's like he's yelling over his shoulder. Yeah, that's what I was telling you. I, you tried to get away, but uh, I wasn't going to have any of that. The way he was looking at me the whole time, I caught up with him pretty quick, and I gutted him. Hold on, let me go get this. And uh, you hear him, the keys being fumbled on the other side and inserted into the lock. Um, it clicks forward, and the door begins to open. What is the party doing? Talgar, are you being right there? I'm assuming you'd be the one to... How, when do you want to... How do you want to trigger this? Ooh. Um... Because the doors, like, click. You hear the lock, like, click. And it's, you're right there. The door's open at this point. You're right there. You, you know, you see the door begin to move, like, a millimeter out. What are you doing? I'm going to attempt to throw the door open. Or, I guess, pull it open, whichever way it's opening. And... 
them get hold the person that's opening it at sword point, like ambush them, and then try to yell for everybody else to follow in. Oh, we were going to wait for him to enter the room. Okay, so what Tiger, time? you basically see the door begin to move after you hear the lock click. You just yank it open, pulling the guy on the other side forward. He's off balance, surprised by this sudden burst of activity. You go to um, grab him and throw him down. I need a strength um, check. Or athletics, basically. You need to beat a 17. Uh, Nat 20 for a 24. Hell. You just manhandle this dude down like mid sentence. He's just like, <laughs> and uh, you yank him out of the door, throw him to the ground. He's at sword point at this point. The door slams behind you. He's wide eyed on the floor. He goes to kind of grasp at his sword. I'm going to try to kick his sword away or, or knock it away and just kind of restrain him while whoever wants to question him and whatnot. Yeah, basically he's looking up at all of you. Uh, Half-heartedly trying to kind of get out of the... Uh, knowing the situation somewhat hopeless at the moment. Chris, hello there! Who the fuck are you? I'm Ty <laughs> uh, This is Carl. Uh, that's Vincent. And, uh, yes, we're here to kick your ass. Uh, Vesmir at this point uh, drops the... Um drops Ray of Frost and casts Adjust Density on him, so he has disadvantage on strength checks. Okay, he looks quite heavy right now. But well, he's, he's light. Me. He's light. Gosh, we've, oh, he's light. Okay. We've, we've made it quite impossible for you to get away. You're in a, quite a pathetic state, I must say. What fucking witchcraft have you cast on me? What's, he's a man, he's not a witch. Are there any, like, f open flames nearby? Oh, there are. I'm, uh, I'm gonna walk over to one, and I'm gonna hold up my hand, and cast Minor Illusion, and replicate one of those little canisters, and hold it up to the flame, and like, you better talk, or else I'm gonna light this thing. You're holding flame near the canister? Well, I'm okay. I, I'm using minor I, illusion I to replicate the canister and ah. lo make it look like ah, I'm okay. about to hold it up to the flame. Gotcha. Okay. So, roll any intimidation with advantage. As his eyes go wide, holy shit, you're crazy. He is a goblin. He is pretty crazy. Ten. Holy crow! I rolled two sixes. You rolled a ten. Yeah, a four and a six. So. <laughs> well, I roll a 10, so meets beats. Yeah. Um, well, no, you 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 yep. won that. No. Oh. Because I I'm the I'm the I'm the defense. Oh, good point. Wow, that You're was so close. Me. That was so close. <laughs> like, seriously. Um so he's like, are you fucking crazy? You'll kill us all. <laughs> Yes, I would, uh, I would trust the green one, uh, the uh, wildest of us all, uh, but uh, you uh, seem like you have some talking to do about uh, what lies ahead, yes? Yes, uh, you should answer our questions or we might let our Durga friends uh, pick you apart. <laughs> he looks over at him and one of them's got the pickaxe kind of just like bouncing it off his palm. Vesmir, under, in under common, says, uh, you'll have your chance. Just uh, be patient. How many men are you? How many are in your crew? Answer quickly. There's, there's, there's 26 of us. There's 26 of you. What the uh, hell are I, you doing here? Can I do an inside yeah. check on that? Yeah, I was going to say, I wanted to incite that too. <laughs> um, sure. We can both give an inside check. Uh, yeah. Natural one. Fifteen. Nat twenty. Uh, Twenty-eight. He may be boasting his numbers a bit. 
But he's confident enough to, to know that there's a few of them in there. If you keep lying to us, we'll cut off bits of you to feed to them over time. I, I ain't lying, I just not so good with my numbers. Sure, well that is not hard to believe. You seem quite stupid to me. What hey, are you doing you. here? Josh, I bet you'd love to fuck me. How many, what are you doing here? We're, we're, we're doing important work. Uh, elaborate. Well, I don't know the whole plan, but we're tired of getting kicked around by the Lord's Alliance. We're going to form our own alliance. We're just, you know, getting started. Anybody remember the name of that boob we killed by the river? What's your name? Uh, I don't quite recall, but uh, I mean, they look the same. Did not they? Look? Ah, so they were in the shape uniforms, were they not? Uh, I'm in uniforms, but unfortunately, I do not believe anybody asked what the guy's name was. I don't think we got names, yeah. Ash Bear. Ash well, we killed about six or seven of you by the river already. It was uh, quite simple. <laughs> they were trying to force some peasants across the river. What would you be doing with them? Oh. We need, we need some more workers. Oh, so there are 26 of you. What could you possibly need more workers for? Well, I mean... For, for, the, for the digging. And what are you digging for? Well, there was a collapse, a tunnel collapse, and we we got to dig back through it. How come? Um, I I I, I don't know. It's just what we're told to yourself. do. What was that, Tower? I was asking if if they've tried digging themselves instead of forcing other people to do it. It's really hard work. Sucks for you, huh? Well, that's why we were getting help. Yes, uh, there's a difference between uh, help and uh, slavery, and uh, this does not look uh, favorably on you at all, I would say. Those? Those guys there, I mean, they attacked us first. So, whatever sob story they've been fucking telling you. We didn't even know about the tunnel. They burst through into our hideout, killed Larry, and and then tried to get away when the tunnel collapsed. Caught on this side, we took him prisoner and put him to work. Yes, but uh, would it perhaps uh, stand that maybe you're in their territory? The way I see it, we were here first. Uh, yes, because uh, one cannot see through walls, and uh, yes. So uh, you're trying to tell me that these Durga came through a tunnel, kicked your ass, killed your friend Larry, and now you want to open the tunnel up? Well, we had him on the run. We They only killed Larry because <laughs> they got the drop on him. Um, the one that understands... Uh, that has comprehend languages cast on him. Does he? Does that Durga back up any of this story? Like, what does he have to say? Um, they they basically contest that that, that they they dug into to uh, uh, this cave system, not knowing it was here. And when they emerged through, your friend Larry grabbed his sword and came at us. We were defending ourselves. <laughs> Things just kind of escalated from there. Either way, these bandits are obviously against the Lord's Alliance, whom I think we're trying to help. I've, I've heard the, the Lord Alliance, uh, for all intents and purposes, are uh, a noble cause. And, uh, I mean, uh, anybody who indicts slavery uh, is definitely on the... A receiving end of justice, I would, uh, I would say. I don't think. Uh... Sorry, I uh, apologize. I did not catch your name. I'm Waymare. 
Well, uh, Wei Mia, it seems that uh, you've uh, outstayed your welcome. I don't think that we have any use for you anymore. Hearing that, Carl unsheathed his dagger. Just And uh, Vesmia holds out his hand uh, to Carl and says, Ah, but uh, please, this, uh, this is something that our friends can take care of, yes? And, and waves his hand over to the Durgo with the... Uh, Pickaxe. No, 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 no! They grab him and drag him over. Oh, a few quick swings of the pickaxe to the side of the head. Leaves him a lifeless corpse amongst his screams of protest before he's cut off. Uh, and he turns to the dogo. Is there, uh, is there anything that, uh, anything that I can say to your comrades that would uh, lead them to believe that uh, we are allies? Um, a clan name that I could mention or something? Does this, does this guy have keys on him? That I was going to say that. Yeah, have, I heard. Yeah, that guy does have uh, a key on him. I'm gonna grab them from their body and hand them to Talgar. So Talgar, the door, please. And as Talgar does that, uh, is there anything else this guy I've been, might have on him? He had a long sword on him and a eh. small hand crossbow at his hip. Does anybody need this crossbow? It's small. Uh, the, uh... The, the other Durger that's unarmed says uh, that he, he would gladly take it. Here you go. Uh, they, they're like, if any come out this way, we'll give them more four. Give them hell in there. Gosh, gosh, we're going to give them uh, something. You return us to, to our home or get us back, you know, the ability to, to, to get home. And uh, we'll gladly pay you. Uh, this Asha. is really important. Uh, we will uh, do our best. Yes, uh, yep, time. Yep. Just like it. I like it. Just Tauga. Shall we? We shall. Door. <laughs> door. Hold the door. Hold the door. Hold the door. Oh, sad episode. All right. Yeah. So a dark corridor um, that does look to have on the far end some uh, lanterns hung into the wall uh, that are dimly burning. Uh, you hear the small din of uh, uh, lots of voices. Um, you hear a clanging of uh, tankards and laughter and voices kind of rising above. It sounds almost like a tavern. Uh, somewhere up ahead, the cave walls playing weird things with the acoustics. All right, here we go. We'll start slowly moving forward. Yep, good follow. Uh, Vesmia, as we're walking down, says to Jocelyn, now that, uh, that was a uh, lesson in uh, diplomacy. Not uh, everybody uh, needs to die, but uh, when you find the guilty parties, then uh, of course, by all means. Out of character, it, it occurs to me we should have asked them their their names, so we could we, if there's a chance we could possibly talk our way out of the next one and be like, oh yeah, they we're new hi we're new we're new hires. They sent us down the path. Jeff said it was fine. Exactly right, but anyway, it's fine. It's fine. So you see a dark passageway that leads off to the side here. Um, the uh, den of, of loud voices growing louder as you proceed. It looks to be coming um, from the uh, kind of northeast here. I let the party know it sounds like the voices are coming from that direction. Should we try to see if this goes around? Well, it uh, seems that we know that they are hostile. I don't think uh, we should uh, tiptoe around this one. Uh, we know we're up against heavy resistance. I don't think we should give them a chance to uh, draw weapons. That's All right. 
That's good. I think your ambush would be good. Keep moving forward. Hey, just a second. Let's pause there. Up ahead, you see, uh, as you kind of slowly, quietly sneak down the hallway, uh, you hear the, the, the loud clanking, and you see p people sitting at tables. It looks like they're waiting for lunch to be served. Um, they are all gathered here, um, kind of waiting, drinking, all wearing very similar uniforms. To the, the people that you've encountered so far. Is it possible for anybody to be sneaky and sneak in there and take a look around? Because I am not sneaky at all. Well, guys, we could go back and get the clothing of these guys, uh, and maybe one or two of us could slip in. It's a little much, don't you think? It depends how many of them there are in there. We're not going to fight a lot of them, but there's likely less than 26. Or we could go double back to the, uh, the path to the side that might lead uh, to somewhere else. Why don't we ponder that over a quick five minute bio break? I need a stealth roll from the party and shall sneak forward. Sneak forward where? Towards the room. There's a bunch of guys ahead of us at the I tables. think I thought we were deciding if we were pulling back or sneaking forward or Well, I mean that kind of will be an open question. Alright, so before we just roll forward and charge in blindly. Um, it was Vesmir's opinion that uh, moving in while they're relaxed, we can, in fact, get the jump on them and ambush them before they have a chance to respond. Let's do it. Unless you've got another idea. Nope. Let's do it. I would if we're trying to be sneaky, I, I might not be the best idea for me to be first. I'm very anti-sneaky. Ty is just going to nudge Talgar on the back. Get in there, Talgar. Get in there. Let's go. All right. I'll attempt to sneak in there in front of everybody. No, Talgar, just go. Yeah, wait. I think we're going to rush in. Oh, we're just sure. rushing, no sneaking? All right. Just move your characters to the entrance, basically, or however, you know, Talgar, you rush to about here. Everybody's coming around, bull rushing into this room. I need initiatives, and somebody cue the battle music. Mr. Vinny. Oh, uh... Taking the updated avatar. Eh, eleven. Vesmir. Uh, eleven. Helgar. Nine. Eleven. No. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Five. Fourteen. Fourteen. Carl. Eighteen. Eighteen. Carl, what is your dexterity? Hi. Well, what is it? Help. <laughs> <It's eight. laughs> Sorry, it's 18. Plus four. Okay. Um... Oh, no, he was asking for a tiebreaker. Uh, yep. And 
Vinny and Vejmir. Dexterity. Uh, uh, Vinny's got higher dexterity than Vizmir. Yeah, I'm 17. I'm 14. Oh. All right. So the party comes rolling around the corner. You see the guards like mid drink begin to drop them and react almost in slow motion, their eyes going wide. Uh, Carl, you go first. Awesome. Uh, one second. There. Uh, there we are. Sorry, that's why I was... Oh, it hasn't done yet. Anyway, it'll do it. Um, how do we do that? It's hard to see when I'm in the... Okay, no, there's lanterns all around. I'm probably not dark. Um, we're going to take our first shot against Soldier... Bridge. Yeah. We're coming in guns blazing. Um, so actually, bonus action is going to go on Soldier B, or bonus action Hunter's Mark, Soldier B, and taking a shot against him. Am I? Yep. Yep. Check out Hunter's Mark. Let me know when you're ready for the hit roll. Give it just a second. I was struggling to remember how to breathe. Fucking like energy drink down the run, too. How'd that happen? Too excited for combat here. <laughs> oh. Alright, so you're targeting who? Uh, human B. Okay. There we go. Uh, attack. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a 27. Um, it definitely hits. For 12 damage. We're going to get a shot at a time just to see if any of, any of them die. If he's still alive, I'm going to keep shooting. Yeah, he's still alive. All he right, second bloody. shot. He looks bloody, though. Right on, right on. And second shot's a natural one, so that's going to pew. Third shot is a 14. Probably does not hit, maybe. Does not hit. Womp womp. Um, that is all I can do. Done. All right, so it is uh, some of the uh, bad guys' turn here. Um, realizing the danger that they're in, a few of them stand up, flip tables, um, and take up kind of some defensive positions. So these guys take uh, cover behind the uh, upturned tables and begin shouting, we're under attack, we're under attack. That will be their turn. Ty, you're up. Vinny, you're on deck. So everybody's behind cover now? They are behind uh, uh, three quarters cover. And okay. Okay. Most I of them will, take the uh, defense action. Oh, very good. Very good. good. I hope that, I hope that helps them. I hope that helps them a lot. <laughs> I'm going to bring down a moonbeam at that location. Okay. And that'll be my turn. 
<laughs> they look around at this light that's like bathing all over him. Uh, Vinny, you're up. Vesmir on deck. Uh, Vinny gets uses half of his movement to uh, kind of see what's going on here, and then he's gonna point in at each of them and go, "Desana, Desana to each of you for all you've done, and for Human A, Soldier A, Soldier B, Human C, Soldier C." So one, two, three. So for five of them, he will cast Bane on. Charisma saving throw of 14. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Bards, they're a thing. <laughs> All right, so it's uh, what with the uh, human. Which one did you cast C on? Uh, I did it on both A's. Right, Bo both A's, both B's. Both, no, C. no. Both A's, both C's, and oh, only okay. Soldier B. Gotcha. Okay, so A's first. Or we'll do human A's first. Human A. Uh, wisdom? Uh, charisma of 14. Charisma. Fail. Pass. And fail. So B human is affected. Be soldier, not be human. Be soldier. Okay. So human A is fail failed, so he's bane two. Yes. Okay. And now for the others. The C's. So one pa second one passes. So A fails. He passes. So it sounds like there's right, right. three of them bane then, really and confusing. three that pa uh, two that passed. Yes. Okay, so human A, soldier B, soldier C. Those are the three that are baned. Yes. Okay, and I'll keep track. I've got it notated. So. And then once that's done, I'll use the rest of my moment to kind of back up a bit. Okay. Anything else? No, I just use the rest of my moment to get out of the way. Vesmir, you're up. Talgar, you're on deck. Okay, so Vesmir will move 15 feet out. And he is going to cast Pulse Wave uh, in a 30-foot cone. And this direction okay yes sorry what's your intention uh pulse wave so i assume the cone's about a 45 degree angle sure pretty much just going for maximum effort right now as you uh, try to hit all, all three of those guys all yeah, I can fit. I can hit all four. Uh, sorry, all three. Um, it is a Constitution saving throw of DC sixteen. Fail, fail, and fail. Okay, so they all take. 21 points of force damage and on top of that and any unsecured objects that are completely within the cone are likewise pushed 15 feet as well so they're all pushed 15 feet away as well as any unsecured items completely in the cone are also pushed that was 21 points of damage correct Okay. So the table is basically thrown and smashed to bits. The oh wow! The individual soldiers are thrown against the wall. Yeah. 
Um, of which, um, B perishes and human C perishes. Nice. Uh, so then he'll use 15 feet of movement to get back behind the cover. Okay. Talgar, you're up. All right. Uh, Talgar is going to move forward to Human Soldier B. And take some swings on him. Okay. First one's going to be a 25. That's going to hit. To me, 11 damage. And then second swing. To me, 18. Uh, 18 will hit. That'll be 13 damage. And that'll do me. He looks bloodied. Bandit A starts his turn inside the moon beam with a constitution saving throw. Which, which one, human or soldier? Uh, human A. Okay. He's banned, so he takes a d4 off his saving throw. Oh, damn. Okay, so he rolled a 19. Takes four off. That 19 goes to a 15. Woo. Yep, and the save is 16. He takes uh, seven radiant damage. Seven radiant damage. <laughs> no. Womp womp. All right. All right. Um, not liking this, but liking the fact that he is behind cover. Um, he is going to shoot at Talgar with a light crossbow. Also minus four against that attack roll. Minus D4. Uh, so that's not going to hit. Oh, well. Uh, frustrated, he runs forward. Uh, no, you know what? He's going to stay behind and cover here. Um, Carl, you're up. Alrighty. I am first going to spend my movement to run the 30 foot to this part of the map that looked like it was nice and dark. Yeah, it's and dark. then, yep. Uh, and then start start shooting so we're first going to shoot human soldier c that is a 20 to hit now a dirty 20 not a natural 20. that uh, that hits and um, bonus action moving hunter's mark onto that guy that's 11 plus 17 damage to him. Is he still alive? Wait, how much? 17. You gave me to... a different number. Say, sorry? What did you hit with? What it, yeah, what you hit, and then what was the first damage roll you gave me? 17. That was the only damage roll you gave me? Well, I, I also rolled the Hunter's Mark. So the, so it was 11 bow damage, 6 Hunter's Mark damage. 11, okay. So, 17 total damage. Correct. Corrected. Okay, he's still up. He is still up. Taking our second shot against him as well, then. That will be 24 to hit. Yep. Oh, that sucks. Uh, for five damage plus Hunter's Mark, nine damage total. He is downed. Not even getting a chance to really give much of a oh. fight. Arrows coming out of the darkness. Anything else? That's my, nope, that's my turn. At the beginning of the next turn, the uh, door flings open, revealing a kitchen. And two chefs 
One of them uh, bearing two big cast iron skillets, the other one two meat cleavers, rush out towards Talgar. Meat cleaver and pots and pans in hand, they begin swinging on him. Pots miss, meat cleavers coming in. Natural one. <laughs> no, nope, nothing hits. As they flail wildly at you with their uh, kitchen accessories. Um, guard A, or um, uh, human soldier A, begins his turn inside the moonbeam. He's not hey dead. He rolls a nine for his saving throw. Oh, I rolled the wrong thing. Hold on. You're fine. Eight points of radiant damage. Eight points of radiant damage. All right. He is going to shoot at Vinny with his uh, longbow. That's a 26. That hits. Cool. Eight piercing damage as an arrow streaks out and hits you. Okay. Eight damage and... Beast? Bane is Sweet. lost. B swings on Talgar twice. Um, one hit. Which? What was it? Was that a twenty? Nope. Oh, you don't. You. Oh my God. That's right. You have a new AC. What's your new AC? Twenty-one. Holy shit! All right. You're only Unmodified. Gonna fight, only gonna fight dragons from here on out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he misses. Um, there should be a. The the cook gets to go again. I oh, know he already went. So Ty, you're at Vinny. You're on deck. Which cook went? Both. <laughs> Sorry, or... it feels clunky. That's what happens when we take a week off. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to maintain the moonbeam where it's at for the time being, and Human A is going to get a ball of flame in his, in his face. Uh, I'm going to cast Produce Flame. Uh, okay. Uh, does a 22 hit. It does. All right. He's going to take uh, nine fire damage. Nine fire damage. He is scorched, burnt, uh, looking pretty bad. And but that... That's, uh, uh, yeah, that shall end my turn. Okay, Vinny, you're up. Vesmir on deck. Has Jocelyn had a turn? Oh, she's, yeah. She's not in the initiative at the moment. Uh, Jocelyn always goes last. She always rolls a one automatically. Right, but this is my second go round. Yeah, so, um, she would have had an action, but let's say she was confused about rushing in. So she's got her wits about her, whatever you want her to do, you can do at the end of this turn. Okay. Or the end of this round. So it's Vinny's turn? It is Vinny's turn. Vesmir on deck. All right. Um, he's going to look back at Jocelyn. Look, I'm going to try to make a chef kebab. And he shoots a crossbow bolt at Cook E. He's an elephant. <laughs> All right. Nat 20. Um, All right. And that is 16 piercing. <laughs> he takes the hit. <laughs> and that's my turn. Uh, Vesmir, you're up. Talgar on deck. Okay. Um, which one did uh, Thai Sacred Flame? Oh, the flame guy. Was it Soldier or Human? Oh, it's only so, uh, a... Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're right. It, I'm going to... Basically, I'm going to use my Wand of Magic Missile uh, to attack the one that's least damage out of the A's. Um, 
So he's going to take 3d4 plus 3. Okay. Uh, so 12 damage total. Alright, you hit a uh, soldier. Um, he looks bloodied at this point. And uh, I will move back a little bit more, and that is my turn. Uh, Talgar, you're up. All right, I'm going to take another swing on Soldier B in front of me. 30-20. That hits. That is 17 damage. How do you want to do it? Just chop them, chop them clean, clean down the middle as I uh, change my aim to the next one. There's this red spray as he screams and you cut through his lungs. Uh, the chefs are now covered in blood. Which which cook did Vinny hit? He uh, is an hit. elephant. All right, and then I'm going to take my second swing on E. Okay. It's a 17. The 17 will hit. And that'll be 17 damage. He looks very bloodied. And that's my turn. Alright. The Scorched Bandit begins his turn. Scorched his face like peeling skin. He's bathed in his radiant light. He turns to his compatriot, his brother in arms, and pleads, help me, help me, as Ty's Moonbeam burns into him yet again. Aww. And he rolls a four. Wow. All right. He takes 14 radiant damage. He had four HP. So he like, uh, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, like face belts <laughs> in your moonlight. And he is gone. Bye-bye. Um, and with that, Carl, you're back up. Well, <clears throat> okay. Um, we're gonna put our hunter's mark on Cook E as an epsilon. Is that right? As in monster? Was taken. Yeah. No. Cookie monster. Ha <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yep. Hunter's mark goes over, and we're gonna we're gonna send in the arrows. First shot is. That's gonna hit. That's a twenty-four. That hits. Four. Oh, eight damage total. Uh, against the uh, elephant. Elephant. Eight damage total. Uh, that is enough to uh, retire him from combat. Nod curtly and take our aim at Cook Delta, and fire away. He is wielding pots. Big cast iron skillets. That's probably gonna. Yeah. So that's a twenty-six to hit. Twenty-six hits. Or, oh, and that's not that's not Hunter's Mark because already bonus action. So he only takes eleven damage. And then that will be my turn. All right. Well, A starts his turn bathed in moonlight. Constitution saving throw of oh my god he rolled a two. Oh. Um, how much damage? Just uh, eight radiant damage. Just eight. Just eight. Um, he is going to try to get the hell out of that. And he's just going to rush headlong into this hallway. Screaming a battle cry as he heads straight for Ty. Hello! He will slash twice with his long sword. Uh, first one hits, second one misses. First one, swing and a miss. I use cutting words. Or not, uh, yeah, reaction cutting words. And that is a d6. So it's a full six off his, his attack roll. So that would have been an 18 to hit? Still hits. 
No, 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 no. The 17. Oh. Yeah, because he has a plus. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He has only a plus five. So that would have been a negative. Negative one. So he, he rolled a 22 total. Minus so 22 six. minus six. Can't do math. At 16. 16. Is 16 hit, Ty? It still hits. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of math for nothing. Sorry. It's okay. Um, does 1d8 plus 2. 7 points of slashing damage. <sighs> Acceptable. <laughs> and D is going to slam his pots together trying to hit you in the head, Talgar. That's an amazing image. He is using his special cooking attack. And he misses. <laughs> Swings his pot again. Um, 18 still does not hit. He's not great with his pots. He's trying really hard. He's got a heart. Um, and with that, that makes it... Jocelyn's? Hi's turn. Vinny, you're... Oh, no. Yeah, Jocelyn was supposed to go. Uh, I don't have the character sheet for it, so I think... Uh... Whoever was controlling her last time needs to step in. She basically has an initiative of one, all stats are zero, and she rolls uh, straight up for her attacks. Single attack. Alright, she's gonna rush in and attempt to stab Sol Soldier A. Uh, Seventeen to hit. Seventeen will hit. Uh, what for damage? Oh, the, uh... 1d8, 1d6. What, what's the rapier do? Uh, it's 1d6. Yeah, so it's 1d6, but no, uh, nothing else. No, rapier's uh, 1d8. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because yeah, I have a rapier. Just the dice, no, no bonuses. Sorry about that. <laughs> two. That's two points of damage to him. All right, now it is Ty's turn, Vinny, you're on deck. Oh, you know what? I got hit. I needed to make a concentration saving throw. Um, yeah. okay. So I, it was seven damage? Yes. So just need to be I rolled a 17. For a you plus are A-OK. -okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to, uh, just for good measure, move the beam to cover... Damn, can I... There we go. Just for good measure to cover a hole here and i think uh yeah actually i think doing that uh consumes my action let me double check here it's an action not a bonus action uh, 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 uh yeah and i'll just hold i'll, I'll do that and i'll just hang out yep that'll end okay. my turn vinnie you're up does me on deck all right, uh, I'm going to pull out the silver mirror and kind of point it at Jocelyn. Good job, Jocelyn. And then I'm going to look at, uh, just in case, I'm going to look at Soldier A and go, you can't touch this. And I cast Sanctuary on Jocelyn. And that ends my turn. Besmer, you're up. Talgar on deck. Cool. Targeting Soldier A around the corridor a little bit. I would like to cast Ray of Frost. Alright. That is a 19 to hit. Uh, that will hit. And oh, almost max damage for 15. Uh, 15 against today. That is enough. How do you want to do it? I uh, like sub-zero him and like freeze part of his torso as he just sort of crumbles a bit, almost Terminator 2 style, liquid nitrogen. Just across the floor. All right, he is gone. And that's my turn. Uh, Talgar, you're up. Carl, you're on deck. All right, swinging on Cookie. <laughs> He's got heart, man. He's got a heart. 24. It's definitely going to hit. It's going to be 15 damage. Holy shit. He's still on his feet. 
Well, let's try a second time. Oh, that's a 16. That's 16 hits. He's wearing an 8. In that case, that's another 15 damage. Damn. Those rolls are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you just play him open. Uh, and he is expired. Mm -hmm. He is an ex-chef. Dang, I actually had a, I had a death plan for that one. Are you saying you, you flayed the chef? You look around at the carnage and chaos, upturned tables splintered against the wall, chairs knocked about, the bodies strewn, some of them seriously maimed beforehand, charred remnants uh, of at least one of them, the smell wafting through kind of the chamber, but it's quiet. Fire going from in the kitchen, water boiling. But for the most part, that's all you you hear. I'm going straight for the kitchen. See if I can uh, see what they're cooking. Yeah, it looks like they have some type of hearty stew. Um, it looks to be fresh bread that came out of the oven. Uh, there's several tankards of uh, uh, beer and uh, at least a couple of wine. Uh, the kitchen here looks well furnished and well stocked. Beans and cheeses, grains, flour, sugar. Skyrim cheese Whoa. wheels. Nice. Gentlemen, none of those appear to be very large guys. I imagine there's more. You seem to be particularly interested in huge freaking guys. <laughs> huge guys fall quickly. Huge friggin' guy. <laughs> He's a huge friggin' guy. <laughs> God, I can't do the accent. <laughs> Jocelyn a kind of huge steps friggin' guy. <laughs> Jocelyn steps into the room, kind of taking in the sight of, of this encounter. How fast, how violent it was. Is it, is it always this way? Actually, no. sometimes it's faster. And sometimes you were the one killed. Vinny calls from the kitchen. I told you, adventures are the most powerful thing on the face of the planet. Yes, now uh, there isn't much time to waste. So, Jocelyn, can you uh, help me uh, search the bodies for uh, anything of interest? Yeah, um, other than the long swords, hand crossbows, um, there doesn't seem to be anything of personal or of value on them. No sacks of coin. Vesmia grabs one of the hand crossbars and hands it to Jocelyn and says, Potentially this uh, will keep you more out of uh, harm's way. And uh, I suggest uh, maybe shooting from a distance rather than, uh, you know, coming face to face with uh, the wrong side of a blade. I always wanted to try one of these. And he's pulling the drawstring back. As me collects whatever crossbow bolts he can and hands them to it. She loads one up and shoots the nearest corpse. Thud. <laughs> he goes over and collects the uh, bolt out of the corpse. I just tug off the door here. Door? <laughs> how many? How many rations can I gather for the guys? Y'all's packs, again, are very much stuffed. Y'all have consumed, what, maybe three rations on your way here? No, y'all had good berries. So yeah, we consumed really one. We don't have much inventory room, basically, which you guys can carry. I got uh, rid of a lot of gold to make the silver powder, and I used some of that silver powder to make holy water. But, I guess yeah. it just changed its volume, but weight wouldn't have changed. Fair enough. I would say that you can probably gather easily, quickly, like five rations out of out of what's in there. A ration for each of you, basically. Okay. If you spend some time packing it up, maybe, but you would have to, you know, find a box or something to to put it in. 
I will do so while they're looting and giving crossbows like Oprah. Okay. Just come on, Talga. Talga's gonna walk up to this door and attempt to open it. Um, well, sorry, hold on. So while you, uh, while the, the quiet for the most part sets in, um, after a, a few moments, a, a, a meager, weak voice echoes from down the hallway. What, what, what's going on out there? I'll, um... What's going on down there? Oh, he beat me to it. <laughs> We heard quite a commotion coming down from down there. Are you I okay? Will, I will use um, minor illusion to uh, to mimic one of the other uh, uh, guys' voices and kind of um, um, play along with uh, Ty. Um, yeah, everything's fine here. What's going on over there? Are, are you here to rescue us? Is that the dagger? I think that's the dagger. I'm not sure the uh, dagger speaks coming. Uh, who goes there? I'll walk down and check it out. It's me, Prisoner A, with no name. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Boblin, the goblin. <laughs> Oh, now you uh, you walk down the hallway and what you see is uh, a jail cell, um, or kind of a row of them. Uh, two of them house Durger, um, looking in mighty poor condition, uh, and the other holds two humans. They look to be wearing dirty merchant garb. Their face is a little taunt, like like they haven't been fed very well. You the where are all the keys for these cells? She points, and there's a hook on the wall uh, that has the, the keys to the cells. Carl oh. will start to get his thieves tools out, then sighs and puts them back in his pocket. <laughs> womp, womp. I'll, uh, I'll nab the keys off the wall and waltz over to this first. And just not even thinking, I'll just start unlocking the, this first cell for the people in it. There we go. Yeah. Okay. You, must be, you must be very careful. I'm going to send you an alicient. You know the way out of here, yes? You go down this hall and you take a left, and you just head straight out. Are there any? Thank you. Are there any Thank more prisoners you. here? Just more of the Durger. As they were giving these bandits trouble, yes? I, I don't know. I was brought here after. You were brought here after. I see. I see. They must the have accosted you on. On the road, yes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. Uh, does it seem like they're being pretty forward? Very much. They 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 look like prisoners that are released. They're they're not in very good condition, but they're kind of like hobbling, making their way. Okay, just wait one moment. One moment. I'm gonna do uh. Come over to the Durger. And um. I'm just gonna give them the the like a like a universal signal to just if they would understand it, just like just. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute. They look very broken, and they're kind of just standing in their cell, just waiting. I sh I, I'm, I'm afraid that if we send these people out with the Durga at the beginning, that they might slay them accidentally. And I want to avoid that at all costs. Do you think if we send them all out as a group, that the Durga at the front will just kind of hold off? Or do you think we should just escort them all out? I uh, I think this is a, a worthy plan to send them out with the Durga. Uh, and uh, Vesmir starts talking in Undercommon to the Durga and explains that uh, he's freed, we freed their compatriots out front. Um, don't harm these humans. They mean you no harm. We mean you no harm. And uh, we've just attained your freedom and we plan to clear out these caves. I'll go to uh, open both of the doors for the Durga. The Durga hobble out. So he hobbles out. They thank you, all of them, for releasing them. Um, the Durga are like, but, but we can't go into the sunlight. What did you say? 
and said, we can't go into the sunlight. I don't understand him, though, so I'm talking to Vesmir. Uh, yes, uh, they, uh, they uh, can't go into the sunlight, they said. Oh, uh, just, they're just leaking up with their compatriots at the entrance. That wasn't in the sunlight, that was a cave, right? Well, I believe so. I think so. Okay, so that's just some just... explaining, you kind of get the point across. And they, uh, they, they agree to escort them, they thank you again for releasing them, and they, they begin to head towards the, the front cave entrance. Uh, on the way, Vinny will kind of point to the kitchen. Uh, grab some food if you need it. There's plenty there. And some fresh stew, so um, get your bellies full. You see the woman kind of dart in there and grab a double handful of kind of whatever's laying about nearby, uh, but not wanting to stay around you know, a minute longer. She, she hurriedly catches back up and, and heads out the mouth of the cave. Chitaga. <laughs> <laughs> Door. It's time. It the is paladin time. sworn foe. You reach forward with your mighty great hand and embrace the handle. <laughs> um, the door is unlocked. As you open it, you are greeted to what looks to be a um, actually really well furnished office. There's books. Couple small chests. Um, it's just really well furnished. There's design plans for what looks to be expansion of some tunnels um, on one of the tables. It's just a really well furnished study. It's, it stands out here with the natural cave walls. This is quite out of place. Check some plans here. Uh, they're trying to uh, maybe do some digging. And, uh, Interesting. Any way to tell who it may belong to? Um. In your investigation. <laughs> um. After kind of going over things, you're able to find some some correspondence. Um. It looks like that. Uh, whoever these belong to has been corresponding with somebody inside of the Lord's Alliance. Uh, the tone of the letters do not uh, lead you to believe that those negotiations are going well. So it seems unfriend. It seems unfriendly. Yes. Actually, looks like these, uh, they are at least communicating with the Lord's Alliance and it is, uh, it is not cordial. They, they do not like each other, it seems. <laughs> Any names? Um, let's see here. But uh, yeah, I kind of agree. They did mention um, um, wanting to rebel against the Lord's Alliance. So this is kind of a rebellion group, but I kind of don't like the way they handle uh, uh, civilians. Oh, no, certainly not. They are, they are not. Uh, it doesn't seem to be very much good about these people at all. Yeah, they are scum. You can give me a name whenever you find it, man. Yep. It's not, not, not worry. It. Yeah, yep, not a worry. I was, I was supposed to see where this goes, I suppose. Speaking of names, are there any books in here that are interesting? Um, not really. There's, there looks to be some different ledgers from various companies, um, or at least partial ledgers. There looks to be, uh, just a bunch of random paperwork that doesn't have any semblance of connection. Some of them look like shipping receipts. None of it for, you know, cave in the mountains. They look all between different ports or different towns. We did say there was one about the expansion, tunnel expansions. Yeah, there is a, on the drafting desk, there there does appear to be um, what appears to be plans for, for tunnels to be constructed. Is it like a map? Is there like a map of this compound? It's not a map of the compound. It looks to be just an uh, expansion off of, off, you know, maybe part of the complex. Okay, fair. 
Did you say there are chests in here too? There is a small wooden chest. If anyone wants to check it out. Uh, maybe uh, the ranger can uh, be sure that it is not trapped, or uh, I can uh, actually, please, allow me. I will uh, investigate for traps. Give me an investigation. 23. You do not believe it is trapped. Uh, is it the same locked? It is locked. Uh, please, uh, Carl, uh, if you would like. Oh, sure. Takes his thieves' tools out of his pocket. Yes. Grabs the chest and gets to work. All right, give me a slight hand check. 27. Is that good? Minimal effort. <laughs> what? I have a plus 10 sleight of hand now. Nice. Uh, the room's not super well lit, but there are some small lanterns on the walls. But as you raise the lid of this chest, uh, the contents catch the light, scatter it back into your face, as there is uh, about half a chest worth of gleaming platinum coins. Jocelyn's eyes grow wide at this. He what was the volume? Coin. My treasure. It's about half of half of the treasure chest is filled with it. Oh wow. Um, and there is one port potion um, in a glass bottle and inside the chest. If you were in knowledgeable folks about these things, switches the potion around. If you would like to figure out what this is, which would be probably Vesemir or Vinny, I think. It's got like a transparent liquid. It uh, has like a sliver of, of what almost looks to be a fingernail floating in it. Gross. We've seen these so before. before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all have seen that one before? Yeah, uh, usually it's like a potion you... of giant growth or something. Kill giant strength. Yeah, that, that's exactly that what one. It is. Yep, yep. So you've identified one before, then, yep. then yeah, you know. Okay. So maybe Talgar should have this guy swishing it around. Who has room for this chest? This is going to be heavy. I see you down that dark passageway, Ty. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I have a... Uh... I have room in my pack. Here you go. I have room in mine as well. Ash, well, come here, Joshua. Let me. Let's just split it then. Easy. You take some, I'll take some. She takes kind of like lion scoops of the treasure into her backpack. Takes definitely more than half. I'm just gonna kind of smile and laugh. <laughs> He puts the backpack back on and is beaming a smile. Uh, how many should I have added to my inventory? Uh, 350 platinum pieces. 350. 350. Nice. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. I had a hide armor in my inventory that I'm going to remove. Because just throw, it's just... throw on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you threw it to the ground. <laughs> I'm just taking out shit. Like, I got like all my gold in my hand. I'm like, just dumping it on the floor. This is crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when you get that new gear in an RPG. Like, yeah. Like everything you've been holding on to is now worthless. Like I hate you. You stupid gun that I spent ten hours with. I hate you now. You're worthless. So yeah. Um, okay, so what would the party like to be doing? I should, well oh. that's that's quite the haul, but there does seem there there does seem to be some missing. I mean, Joshlin was very astute. I mean, it's... And plus there's this dark passageway that seems quite interesting. Yeah, she says there should have been much more. 
I, I hope the bastards didn't spend it. Uh, there's a lot more of this cave to 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 uh, explore, Josh. A lot more. I know. It just seems so rude, though, to spend somebody else's treasure. Well, I'm just gonna uh, like try to think of something to say and just fail. <laughs> well, we punished them for it. How about that? I bet yes. there's still more about. She but, grabs her rapier. So, Jocelyn, uh, I mean, it seems like a very valuable life lesson that, uh, I mean, when it comes to things like this, it is finders keepers, yes. And uh, clearly they were here first, so therefore it does not count as your treasure. They just stumbled upon it. I had a map. The map means nothing. Did you tell them about it? No. Well... Then, uh... It just seems I'm... mighty unfair. We did all this work, and they just stumbled upon it and spent half of it. Well, well this... Joshua, the, the work is not done yet. See, there's a, there's a tunnel right here. There's lots of capes left, and that idiot outside said there was 26 people. We've only killed, like, 10. And we haven't found the big one yet. The big you, one. You're in the big one. <clears throat> All right, so shall the party continue down the dark passage right here? Hell yeah! We'll set our radar first. One ping only. <laughs> Verify our range, Mister Skull. Never knew a Russian sounded Scottish. Yeah, you know, you know <laughs> when you look that damn good in a Russian officer uniform, a make believe like timeline. He really looked Russian. <laughs> hey, it's real to me, damn it. I heard Russian when he talked. They had, the, right. Nash, they had the anthem going, gave me goosebumps. Love it. The only person that Tupelov oh. loves is Tupelov. <laughs> so, as you go down the end of the hallway, I... You find yourself standing at the edge of what looks to be um, like a well-furnished room. Like you know, something you would almost find out of a castle. The construction looks new. And it is extremely well-furnished. There's a bare rug spread, a canopy bed. So I suppose these figures. Great speeches and other religious orders. Um, for several fables and stories uh, of different knights and valiant figures throughout history. Um, a wardrobe, all of the same type of uniforms. Okay, so, it's definitely made of a better quality uniform than some of the others you've encountered so far in that wardrobe. So I look through the wardrobe, and it's pretty much just uniforms. How about how about these end tables? Kind of just books and knickknacks. Um, yeah, there looks to be though at least one. Um, I wouldn't call it a diary. More like a journal, I guess. A man diary. Sure. <laughs> Although it's like the entries are very short. What are the recent, the most recent two say? Sent Clive to find more workers. Hopefully, with the added help, we'll have a breakthrough soon. The re entry before that. We found at least three new recruits. Initiation will begin soon. Hmm. Let's let's keep going. Further back. Sure. Door. Uh, door. I know. I took down door. So no. Have you guys seen the new Suicide Squad? <laughs> no. Behavior, I want to. Do not. Oh man. Uh, if there's a king shark in that. Uh, awesome. You just point to stuff. Character. Yo, yo, that that's movie. a great movie, man. Bird. <laughs> How's it going over there? Bird. <laughs> Door. Go watch it. All right, all right. So the three, the three dudes, and uh, what else? Yeah. Um, there's entries that talk about progress, the slow progress the Durger are making at. Uh, clearing the tunnel and passage. 
I want to kind of skim if I can to like when they arrived here and like what happened. Based on the entries, you, you can validate that the Durger dug into this tunnel, surprised them. Larry drew, you know, went to defend his territory. The Durger went to defend themselves. Larry was the loser. And, um... Larry. But the, 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 the fight drew attention from the rest of them, and they were able to push in and give the Durger chase. Um... And in the process, there was a uh, rock slide and a tunnel collapse that uh, cut a handful of the Durger off. Larry was beloved by everyone. So instead of executing the Durger, they decided to put them to work. Doing the most dangerous jobs. Yeah, makes sense. Um, last question about this, and I'll pocket the journal. Uh, okay. Any mention of the treasure? No mention of the treasure directly, mm. but there is entr there's entries here and there for like outgoing money of decent sums. Uh, toss some numbers at me. How how big a sums are we looking? <laughs> you know, Five hundred gold here, three hundred gold there. Okay, I sh uh uh, Jocelyn, you see here, there seems to be a ledger of sort. They are they are spending quite a bit of money. It would be interesting to follow this up, because we, we might find some co-conspirators. Anyway, we, we must move on. We cannot stay in this palatial room in the middle of a cave for too much longer. Let me put the journal in my bag. Like, you can take in this room. It is... The furniture in here is not drab. It is high quality, like you would find in palaces. Like... These were expert craftsmen that did the canopy bed. Um, they spent a serious amount of money just to furnishing this room. Anything peculiar about the room to be noticed? Other than its location, no. Other than how well furnished it is, it's just fucking weird as hell, yeah. Yeah. I'll move the bear rug to see if there's anything under it. Um, there is not. Oh. Hey, Jocelyn, what animal is this? He points to the rug. Who this room would have been for? It's a trick question. It's a druid. It's a womp, womp. bear, because it has no clothes on. All right, let's go. Chitaga. Talgar, door. Um, okay. Talgar kicks open the door. Door fights back. <laughs> uh, you're greeted almost immediately by a blast of kind of like heat. Temperature difference between the room that you were in and the air in the hallway. And it's not coming at you is, is quite substantial. It was quite hot in the room ahead. Um, you hear the tent of uh, anvils falling or, or hammer on an anvil falling. Um, you hear voices up ahead and the room is lit um, by what looks to be a rather large forge going. Ooh, that room is lit. Hey, yeah. Uh, whoa. And, uh... That's a lot of little fires. I'm missing a whole thing. Hold on. So as you kind of are you guys entering in through to the room, like walking in? Of course. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm just re rebooting Tailspire because it got all fucky for me for a second. I wondered what Not happened. A so um, as you uh, as you come in, uh, you notice that there uh, there looks to be a Durger working a hammer on an anvil. Um, there look to be two other individuals dressed in the kind of same attire you've seen elsewhere and a third individual who is wearing red robes and seems to be directing the activities of the others it looks to be kind of a spindly 
guy based on his hand pointing, telling him you know, that they're doing everything wrong. Does he seem very well dressed? He's in robes, like like kind of a just a red robe. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, insignia, same as the bandits. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tugga. Tugga. Tugga, stick him with the pointy end. Fine. Let's go. Out. Okay. Tagar will move forward. As you move forward to in, engage, <laughs> the movement catches the corner of the robed figure. He lifts his head and points a finger. Oh, As great. The arcane energies begin to swirl around the hand. That is where we will pause for the week. Oh. And look, look how we're lined up all nice and neat. Tagar points back. I just want to throw out there that uh, Vesmir is casting counter spell straight away. All right, counter spell to start next session. <laughs>